Wow, we're really flying through this one, aren't we? Right, let's do some coding. Let's connect these graphical elements, our button and our text view, to our code. Over on the left, on the Activity Explorer, click Main Activity, and it will open up the mainactivity.java. Now inside here, you'll notice there's an onCreate method. And this is called whenever the view is created, and it asks every time which uh, layout it should inflate. So we have to create some way to access our text view and our button. And the way we do that is right at the top, before onCreate is declared, I want you to type text view. That's our type text view, semicolon. And then we need something to hold our button reference. So we say button, button, semicolon. And if it complains and says, I can't resolve the symbol button, if we just click on it and we kind of wait for a bit, we should get something that allows us to resolve it. Or right click. There we go. And so if you press Option Enter, up here in Import, it'll drop in Android.widget.button for us. OK. Now we have our references. We actually have to set them to where they are, because at the moment it doesn't know where they are. So let's say text view is equal to, and then in brackets we have to cast it, text view, and then we have to find it. So we say find view by ID, and then in the brackets we say r.id, and we say I would like you to find the resource that is called text view. And if you recall, inside our activity main, our text view ID was that, just text view. So back in main activity, that's what it's finding there. Then we have to do the same for our button is equal to button and then find view by ID, r.id.button. And it's exactly the same story. So now we have a reference to both things. And the next thing we have to do is give them something to work with. And the very first thing I want my app to do when I open it is show me the last thing that I saved the last time I had it open. So that means it needs to check somewhere for some text. And we're going to store that inside the shared preferences, which is something all Android apps can use. We're just going to use a simple version of it, and we were going to say shared preferences, and we will call this shared pref is equal to get preferences, and then we have to give it a mode. So we say context dot mode, and we want private. So it's only accessible by our app and no other apps and pop your semicolon in. You might have to do command or option enter to do the imports for shared preferences. I believe mine are already here. Here they are. Okay, now we have a link to our shared preferences. We need to get a value out of it. So let's say string uh, old item is equal to, and then we're going to say the shared pref we just created dot get string. You'll notice it says it asks for a key and a default value. So let's give it the key. And the key for this is going to be simple. Let's just say old item. And it asks for a default value. And so if this doesn't exist, it's going to give this default value back. So we'll say nothing created yet, dot, dot, dot. And then put your semicolon at the end. So we're just going to save that. Now we need to assign that old item string to our text view. And that's really simple. We say text view dot text or set text. And we say old item. As simple as that. Now, what happens if I want to change that? Well, I have to have uh, an event attached to my button. So when I click that button, it goes ahead and puts that new text from the text view 
into my shared preferences. So make a new line and type button dot set on click listener. And when you click enter, it'll ask you what you want. So we'll say we want to create a new on click listener. And if you just hit enter, it does all of the creation for you. So this inside on click view is going to run every time someone clicks the button. And the only thing we want to do when we click the button is we want to store our text view inside the shared preferences. Type shared preferences dot editor. Editor is equal to shared pref dot edit and semicolon. This allows us to edit the values inside shared preferences. Then we have to put something inside it. So we say editor dot put string. It asks us for a key. And if you recall, we set this key as old item. And then it asks us for the value we want to put in. So we will say text view dot get text and close it all off. And then finally, ooh, we just have a slight error there. So if I hover over there, Ah, we need to convert the get text dot to string. There we go. Because it gets characters which aren't equivalent to a string. Finally, we have to commit that. So we say editor dot commit semicolon. So now every time we click the button, the text inside text view will be saved. Now, I've just realized that I've made somewhat of an error because we don't actually want a text view. We want an edit text. So let's come back to activity main. Let's go to our text view and text and let's put the type up here as edit text. There we go and save that. And if we go back to design there are no errors. Go back to main activity.java and then we're just going to change these types to edit text like so and then here edit text and that should be fine there are no errors and the difference between text view and edit text is that edit text allows you as the user to change the text but text view does not text view just allows you to see the text so let's run that in a simulator at the top here click the bug icon and then choose an emulator to launch I'm going to launch my Nexus 5 and click OK it'll start the emulator and compile everything and that could take a few minutes and here we go the simulator has fired up there's nothing in that string so it has put nothing created yet in here so what we can do is we can go ahead and we can edit all of that and we can change things let's just say my name grant the app master I wish and then when we click change it saves it if you'd like, you can make the whole screen flash to indicate that it's been changed, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Now, if I run this again, so if I just close it off and then restart it, and here we go, it now has the old text that I put into the app.